Thank you, Lisa. I too wish to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet and pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. I'd also like to acknowledge John Kane, Joan Kerner, Steve Brax and John Brumby, Labor champions. How good is it to be here in Geelong? And how good will it be when Geelong, Ballarat, Bendigo, Seymour, the Latrobe Valley, every part of Victoria, how good will it be when we have an Andrews Labor government? <laughs> Geelong is, of course, the home of Labor's National Disability Insurance Agency. This is a dream. It's a Labor dream that will empower nearly half a million of our fellow Australians living with severe disability and hundreds of thousands more of their carers. It is a Labor dream which will be headquartered in Geelong, freeing millions of our fellow Australians from a second-class citizenship and exile in their own country, starting here in Geelong. It is part of a Labor legacy. And hasn't it been an emotional week this week just past? As we were reminded by the video that we just saw beforehand, not just the Labor Party, but our nation lost a giant when the Honourable Edward Gough Whitlam passed away last Tuesday. That evening, the entire Federal Parliamentary Party, our staff, and many true believers in Canberra walked down together from the new parliament down to the old parliament house. On the steps where Gough made that speech, Tanya Plibersek and I laid a wreath on behalf of the Labor family, acknowledging his remarkable contribution. It is humbling when we consider that we are members of the same party which gave the nation Gough Whitlam. Universal health care, free university education, greater rights for women, the racial dis... Yeah, that's worth a clap. <laughs> the protection of the Great Barrier Reef, that sand trickling through the hands of Vincent Lingiari. So, with Gough gone, it is up to us, the current Labor generation. It's up to me, it's up to you, it's up to my federal colleagues, our state colleagues, all the party members and true believers. It is up to us to be as ambitious for the future of this country and this state as Gough Whitlam was ambitious for the future of our nation. We need to reach for that higher ground in everything we do, to liberate the talents and to uplift the horizons of the Australian people. You know, in that first fortnight of his government, Gough Whitlam led a ministry of just two people. In that historic fortnight, they ended conscription they withdrew the last of our forces from Vietnam and they recognised China. Later, Goff said there was only one problem with his two-man ministry. It was twice as large as it needed to be. <laughs> Friends, Goff was never one for false modesty, but there was nothing modest about his vision, his ambition for Australia. We will never forget Goff Whitlam and we should never forget the fundamental lesson that he taught our party in those hard years of opposition. Whitlam knew that Labor was not conceived as a party of protest and that we could not succeed just as a party of protest. Keeping the faith with the millions of Australians who hoped for a Labor government, building a fair society, creating opportunity, nourishing community, helping the vulnerable, it requires the election of Labor governments. People depend upon us being a party that Australians will vote for. 
And when I talk about the people who depend upon us, they're the men and women of Victoria, and you know them very well. They're mums and dads. They're grandparents and neighbours. They're workers and small business people. They're students and apprentices. They're scientists and researchers. Indigenous Australians. People living in our suburbs and our regions. We know the work they do. They're teachers, nurses, carers, child protection officers, police, firefighters, ambulance paramedics. <laughs> These everyday Australians are under attack from Canberra and Spring Street every day. That's why this election is so important. Because after four long liberal years in Victoria of drift, delay and indecision, after four years of cuts and closures and broken promises, after four years of lame excuses and dodgy deals, it's time for a change. It's time for an Andrews government. <laughs> We're going to hear from Daniel very soon. But I want to touch on one example as someone who's spent their whole life in Victoria. It's transport. I grew up in Neerham Road in Murrumbina, right near one of the worst level crossings in Victoria. I remember mum groaning with frustration as the bells would go off and there we were caught again in another traffic jam. And now in the electorate I represent, St Albans, probably the worst level crossing in Victoria. These crossings aren't just slow points for commuters or traffic magnets for congestion. They trigger tragedy. They cost lives. 16 people have died at the main road crossing in St Albans in the last decades. Tragic deaths, all the more pointless because I believe many of them could have been prevented. Now, Daniel Andrews got a real plan to fix Victoria's 50 worst level crossings. That is what he's about. Practical, practical solutions to real problems facing Victoria. It's because he's a leader of substance, not spin. Policies, not press releases. Getting on with the job, not just trying to get up the story on the TV. We need this leadership in our state desperately. New jobs, better transport, decent schools and proper hospitals for all Victorians. This is the positive plan. Daniel's got a plan to get Victoria working again. It's a new Labor vision for a better Victoria. And by contrast, Dr Dennis offers up the same old prescription, the same old conservative recipe for delay and division. Under Ted Bailey, do you remember him? <laughs> He's the bloke that the Liberals sent off to see the vet one day. He just never came back. Under Ted Bayou and now Dennis Napthine. 62,000 Victorians have joined the back of the unemployment queue from Ford, now Co, and hundreds of smaller businesses. Victoria's crime rate is up and Victoria's school funding is down. Hospital waiting times are up, but funding for hospitals is down. Youth unemployment at record levels, yet they're slashing funding for TAFEs and training. It's like every time that Liberal guys see a problem, they cut the funding for a solution. And don't forget about Dennis's invisible friends in Canberra. I'm keen to see Tony Abbott out on the campaign trail in Victoria. <laughs> We're probably going to talk about him more than they are. <laughs> but as long as Tony Abbott has a plan for health, which involves taxing the sick, we need a Victorian Labor government. As long as Joe Hockey's plan for transport is a petrol tax, we need a Victorian Labor government. As long as Christopher Pine's plan for education is a $50 billion cut to our schools and $100,000 university degrees, we need a Victorian Labor government.
as long as, as long as Scott Morrison's only plan is for Operation Self-Promotion, <laughs> we also need a Victorian Labor government. <laughs> Friends, we've got 34 days to achieve what hasn't been done in 60 years. And whether we succeed or fail depends in large part about the measure of who we are as a party. Every day around Victoria, members of the Community Action Network are making phone calls, you're knocking on doors, talking to friends and neighbours and strangers about the quality of life we want in our communities and our suburbs, what this election means and why it matters. These conversations are much more genuine than any billboard. They're much more authentic than any TV ad. They connect and give hope again to Victorians about the validity of politics. So I only have one more thing to ask of you today. If you haven't already made a phone call, if you haven't knocked on a door, it is time to get involved. I can report to you that all around our nation, the labour that we love is stirring, it is awakening, it is finding its voice again. And if you, through the extra energy and commitment that you can display between now and the state election day, can join our cause, then we can make history in this state and this nation. And therefore, it is my final privilege today to introduce the guests of honour, Stephen Joe Gibbs. Last year, Steve and Joe lost their son, Matthew. As a parent, I cannot imagine the pain. It is beyond my capacity to feel that grief. But today, they found the remarkable courage to share their highly personal, highly powerful story with all of us. Steve and Joe are here to remind us of what really matters. When it is all said and done and all the battles have been lost and won in the political debate, Steve and Joe are going to remind us of what is really important. People. Please make them really welcome. <laughs> 